Hello, physical science students. Mrs. Smith here. I'm going to go through a couple of the calculations um, from the motion review guide. So if you're having a hard time, you can scroll ahead to which problems you need help with. Starting with number 28. It says, you are standing on a curb watching a train go by at 45 miles per hour. How fast does the train appear to be moving? Well, if you are not moving relative to the earth, what the train is, it will appear to be moving just at its normal rate, which is 45 miles per hour. If you look at B, person A is walking toward the front of the train at 4 miles per hour. How fast does he appear to be moving? So if the train is moving forward at 45 and the person is walking an additional 4 miles per hour in the same direction, we want to add those two. So the person will appear to be moving at 49 miles per hour. C, person B is walking toward the back of the train at 3 meters per at three miles per hour. How fast does he appear to be moving? So now you have the train moving in one direction at 45, but you have the person moving the opposite direction at 3. So in this case, we want to subtract the two numbers so the person would appear to be moving at 42 miles per hour. D, person C is seated on the train. How fast does he appear to be moving? Well, you have the train moving at 45 miles per hour, and the person isn't moving at all. They're just sitting there. So they appear to be moving at the same rate as the train, 45 miles per hour. 29, you and a friend are swimming in a stream. The stream is moving at 12 meters per second. A, you are swimming downstream, that means with the current, at 2 meters per second. Your friend is watching you. How fast do you appear to be moving? So the stream is moving at 12 meters per second. You are moving with the stream at an additional 2 meters per second. So in this instant, we want to add the two together. So you appear to be moving at 14 meters per second. B, you're swimming upstream, that means against the current, at 1 meter per second. So the stream is still moving at 12, but you're moving the opposite direction at 1. So hopefully you can tell that you should subtract the two numbers and you would get 11 meters per second. All right, let's move down to the diagram, some more math-based ones. 31, you ride your bike from school. All right, here, to the movies, and then to your friend's house. What is your total distance? Remember, total distance is the length traveled. So you went half a kilometer and then an additional two and a half kilometers. So if you add those together, you get three kilometers. What is your total displacement? Remember, your displacement is how far you are from your starting point. So you started at the school, you ended at your friend's house. Your displacement is one kilometer. All right, let's get rid of that drawing and look at number 32. 32 says you walk from your house, so we're starting here, to school, to your friend's house, and then to the movies. What is your total distance? So let's add our length. We went 3 kilometers plus 1 plus 2.5. That gives us 6.5 kilometers. Total displacement is how far are you from where you started. You started at your house, you ended at the movies, so we went three kilometers plus another half, you are three and a half kilometers from where you started. All right, let's erase this. 33, you drive from the movies, so we're starting here, to your friend's house back to your house, and then to school. What is your total distance? Again, we need to add up our total length traveled, two and a half, plus one, plus three, and you get 6.5 kilometers. Total displacement, how far are you from your starting point? We started at the movies, we ended at school. How far are those two apart? Half a kilometer. All right, let's move on to some more calculations. Looking at number 38. For the next couple of problems, we're gonna be using this triangle. All right, a 1,500 kilogram truck is sitting at rest. What is the force required to accelerate to four meters per second? So our first step is our formula, F equals MA. The mass is 1,500 kilograms. It gave us that right there. 
We're going to multiply that arc by our acceleration, which is 4 meters per second squared. And when you put that into your calculator, you will get 6,000. And the correct units for force are newtons. All right, number 39, what is the acceleration, A equals, of a girl on a skateboard if the unbalanced force toward the girl is 12 newtons. The total mass of the girl and her skateboard is 47 kilograms. Acceleration equals force divided by mass. The force they told us was 12 newtons. The mass they gave us was 47 kilograms. That gives us an acceleration of 0.26 and our units are meters per second squared. Alright, number 40. You and a friend are bored and decide to push a watermelon around your backyard. How fun! A net force of 23.1 newtons is exerted on the watermelon. If the watermelon is accelerating at 4.2 meters per second squared, what is its mass? So they want us to find the mass of the watermelon. So our formula is mass equals force divided by acceleration. What force was exerted? Right there, 23.1 newtons. And what was the acceleration? 4.2 meters per second squared. Put that into your calculator, you get 5.5. What are our units? Remember we're solving for mass. So we will get 5.5 kilograms. That's a pretty heavy watermelon. All right, let's move on to the next set. For the next couple questions, we're going to be using this triangle. All right, we've got some data for a girl traveling on her bike before she fell off. 41, what was the speed of the girl from 10 to 20 seconds? Well, we know that speed equals distance over time. So from 10 to 20 seconds, she went from 12 to 28 meters. So how many meters is that? That is 16. You just need to subtract those two. And how long did it take her to go from 10 to 20 seconds? Again, you subtract. Took her total of 10 seconds. That gives you 1.6. What are your units? Look right here. Meters per second. 42, what was the average speed for the girl's short bike trip? So average speed is still going to be the same formula, distance over time. But now we look at all the data. How far did she travel total? Her total distance was 28 meters. The total time it took her to do that was 20 seconds. That gives you 1.4. Again, look at your units, meters per second. 43, a cyclist started trail riding at 9 a.m. and had ridden 48 miles by noon. The cyclist then took a break to enjoy the scenery, continued his journey for another 35 miles, arriving at his final destination at 3 p.m. What was the cyclist's average speed for the journey? Average speed, we know, is distance over time. So what was the total distance traveled? Went 48 miles here, another 35. So what is 48 miles plus an additional 35 miles? He went a total of 83 miles. That is a pretty long bike ride. And time started at 9 a.m., reached his final destination at 3 p.m. So from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., how many hours is that? Six. Put that in your calculator, you get 13.8. Look at your units, miles divided by hours, miles per hour. All right, 44, if a bus travels 50 miles per hour, how far will it travel in five hours? How far will it travel? They're asking us to find a distance. If we look back at our triangle, we know distance equals speed times time. The speed is right here, 50 miles per hour. The time was five hours. So that gives us 250. And what are our units? We have miles divided by hours. So you have hours on the bottom and hours on the top, which we know means that they will cancel. So we're left with miles which makes sense because they're asking us to find a distance. All right, let's look at number 45. If a bus travels 250 miles at a speed of 45 miles per hour, how long did the trip take? How long should cue you in that you're trying to solve for a time? If you look back at our triangle, we know time is distance divided by speed. Here is your distance, 250 miles. Speed, they gave you 45 miles per hour. That gives us 5.6. We look at our units. 
Again, there's miles on the top and the bottom, so they will cancel out. That gives us units of hours, which makes sense because we are solving for time. All right, number 46, Simpson drives his car with an average speed of 85 kilometers per hour. If he drives for six and a half hours, how far will we travel? It's queuing you in to find a distance, which we know is speed times time. So what was his speed? 85 kilometers per hour. And for how long? Six and a half hours. That will give us 552.5 for our number. If we look at our units, hours are on top and bottom, so they cancel. And we are left with kilometers. 47. An airplane traveling from San Francisco to Chicago travels 1,260 kilometers in three and a half hours. What is the airplane's velocity? Remember, velocity is a speed in a given direction, so we can use the same formula, distance over time. Our distance, 1,260 kilometers, time, three and a half hours. We get 360, let's look at our units, kilometers per hour, and it's a velocity, so we need to include direction, which is northeast. So our final answer, 360 kilometers per hour northeast. 48, John and Jenny are walking in the park at 1.6 meters per second eastward. How long will it take them to walk 72 meters? How long should clue you in that you're solving for time? Distance over velocity, or you could say distance over speed, but since they told us eastward, they're giving us a velocity. Our distance, 72 meters. Our velocity, 1.6 meters per second east. That gives you 45. And what will our units be? We've got meters on top and bottom. That leaves us with seconds. It only takes 45 seconds. All right, 49. A gazelle was running at 4 meters per second. It then spotted a cheetah chasing after it. it sped up to 18 meters per second. If it took the gazelle three seconds to achieve this new velocity, what was its acceleration? Remember our acceleration formula, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Our final velocity, it sped up to 18 meters per second. What was our initial velocity? It started at 4 meters per second. And we're dividing by that by 3 seconds. Remember, do your subtraction first. So 18 minus 4 gives us 14. Divide that by your 3 seconds, you get 4.7. And our units for acceleration are meters per second per second, or we say meters per second squared. All right, 50. A driver is traveling east on a dirt road when she spots a pothole ahead. She slows her car from 14 meters per second to 5.5 meters per second in 6 seconds. What is the car's acceleration? We can use the same formula. Final velocity is 5.5. What velocity did the driver start at? Started at 14. And we're going to divide that by the time, which is 6 seconds. Again, make sure you do your subtraction first before you do your division. You get negative 1.4 meters per second squared, which means she slowed down, which makes sense because it tells you she slowed her car. All right, that is it for today. Try the challenge and super challenge if you would like. They are not going to be counted for credit, but you will see them um, as extra credit type questions on your test.